Hi, my name is Chris and welcome to B Company. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos, then you know that I'm a Battlefield fan since the first minute. I got addicted when Battlefield 1942 came out in 2002, and I also spent a lot of time with the Desert Combat mod and Battlefield Vietnam. But that's nothing compared to the time I spent playing, modding and creating machinimas with Battlefield 2. I also played Battlefield 2142 for quite some time, but it just never managed to thrill me like Battlefield 2 did. So that was my background with the franchise when Bad Company was released in 2008, as a console exclusive game. I did own an Xbox back then, the first one, but as a PC gamer and Battlefield fan it did hurt to see that this game would only come to the next gen consoles. This did hurt so much because it featured destruction, so no more hiding behind a building when I am in a tank. And the trailer stars showed us for the single player did look like they were creating something fun and special. So I had no choice, die hard Battlefield fan that I am, I went to the store and bought an Xbox 360. I was then also able to play Halo 3, which is an awesome game, but the main reason I bought the 364 was Bad Company. You might think now, wait a minute, that guy loves the original Battlefield games, Bad Company is nothing like that. Hell, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 are not even like the classic games and he criticizes that a lot. He must have hated Bad Company. Yes, I love the original Battlefield games. I am still playing Battlefield 2 and Project Reality, but here's the thing. I greatly enjoy different experiences, all I demand is that the game is done right. That it feels special and unique. And this is what I got with Bad Company. So what makes it special and unique? What makes it memorable? The first thing that comes to my mind is what I showed you at the beginning of this video. The intro the music and the sound that you get when you start it. This is something that got burned into my brain, just like the intro and the music of the previous Battlefield games. Sadly I cannot say the same about the theme music for Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. What caught my attention in all the Bad Company trailers was the single player. It is funny, original, over the top and I just love the characters. It reminds me a bit of the movie Three Kings. I don't lie when I tell you that I have finished the single player of Bad Company over 20 times and I still enjoy it very much as I am playing it again to record some gameplay for this video. There are only a handful of single player games that I can say this about. What I like and what gives Bad Company a lot of its character is that it does not take itself very seriously. And as I said I really love the characters, so I'd like to show you the beginning of the single player where you get to know them. Private Preston Marlow reporting for duty, sir. You sure you're in the right place? I believe so, sir. This is B Company, right? Yep, sure is. But you want to cut out that sir, yes sir crap? I'm a sergeant, not the goddamn president. Okay, sorry sir. I mean, sergeant. Yeah, whatever. That one over there, his name is Sweetwater. Hey, welcome to the sandbox. His name is Hacker. Hey, how you doing? You smell very clean. My name's Redford, you can call me that, or Sarge. We're all in this mess together now. Right, Sarge. Do you know what squad I'm supposed to belong to? A new guy trying to smell, like a brand new toy. Yeah, I'll give you three to two, he's dead by Friday. Sarge? You can ride with us. <laughs> new guy. New guy. Okay. days. But you best get to know the others. Pack it over here. He's a natural born demolition expert. What? I just like it when stuff blows up. Yeah, and that's just fine as long as it's the enemy stuff. Yeah. And Sweetwater? 
But if you ever need somebody to talk a hole in your head, guess who's your guy? That's a cheap shot. I don't really talk that much. Shut up. Bravo one, Charlie. This is Mike one, Juliet. Over. Uh, listen, it's the new dispatch girl, Miss Tulane. Mike one, Juliet. This is Bravo one, Charlie. Over. You ought to move up ahead of the convoy to scout the terrain. I'll get back to you with further orders. Out. Oh, she's got a real nice voice. Sweet one. Check it out. It's the cavalry. Yeah, isn't it amazing how we always go towards the fighting and they're always flying in the opposite? I hope those are our guns. It's a beautiful sound either way. It's an apple. Ah, typical. Quit your wine and sweets. It's about time we got some action. Look at the new guy. He's... Already? I was just about to learn his name. I think it was probably Joe. Usually is. His name is Preston. Preston Marlowe. And he's not dead. Right, soldier? What I really hate in single player games is when I'm playing a faceless and silent protagonist. Or when I have to play like 20 different people. In Bad Company I'm playing Marlowe Preston. So I have a character that I can relate to. I highly prefer that design in single player games. So we have Sweetwater, Haggard, Sarge, Marlow and Miss July. But I think that there's actually an additional character, and that is the destruction. You know, you can shoot grenades too. Try blowing a hole in that house. It's fun. <laughs> in Bad Company you could not destroy the entire building. But doing that kind of damage was also a lot of fun, especially in the multiplayer. Even today I dare to say that this is a good looking game. I really like its art style. If I would have to name two things that I don't like about the graphics, then it would be the narrow field of view and the aliasing. But both is caused by the limited processing power of that console generation. Unlike the supernova sun and the blue tint in Battlefield 3, which were intentional design decisions. Then there's the sound, it is extremely powerful, most likely a bit too powerful, but just like everything else in the game it is over the top and it fits into the theme of the game. This is 07 at 12 miles now, bearing 270, Angel Street. Oh man! I should have joined the Air Force! That's what I call an explosion! Bravo 1 Charlie, hope you enjoyed the show. One thing that I absolutely hate in single player design is when you get forced through a corridor, with little to no option to choose your own path. The map design in the single player of Bad Company is nothing like that. It is very open, the game tells you where you need to go, but how you get there is entirely up to you. This is the plan. We hit the weapons depot first. Once we have that area secured, we regroup and we move on to the fuel dump. Excuse me, Sarge, but wouldn't it be easier to do it the other way around? Or, or we could split up into teams and take them both at the same time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Or I could shoot the two of you and do this thing along with Marlo. Uh, okay, we'll do it your way. You're the boss. You also don't get attached to some mounted gun and have the game drive you around until a kill limit is reached. And unlike the chat mission in the single player of Battlefield 3, where you're just a passenger, Bad Company allows you to pilot a helicopter on your own. So, while you are on your way to your objective, you might want to explore the map a little, as you can find collectibles there, and if you listen to your squad members then you will hear some funny conversations and learn a bit more about them. Later in the single player you will not only find weapons on the map, but also this. Acta non verba. That's the Legionnaire's motto. It's Latin and it means action not words. Hang on, I was at the Taco Emporium. I think you'll find that Spanish. I'll just shoot him. Then your motto should be verba non acta, cause you never shut the hell up. Let's get out of here. Uh, you, you should listen, Sarge. Knowledge is power. For example, rumor says he always pays in gold bars. I'll just check uh, for a pulse in his pockets. Well, slap me hard and call me Eldorado. Okay, Eldorado, let's have a look. Whoa, whoa, finders keepers, oh, that's no, 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 just, just, no, So, that's how it started. We found this little piece of gold. To people with less moral fiber, that might have posed a problem. But we're all men of duty. So when the sergeant said the gold belonged to the army, we all agreed and got back to work. And from that point on the hunt for gold starts. I don't want to spoil the entire story here, but the game will not stop to put a smile on your face for the rest of the single player. 
This hunt for gold was also brought over to the multiplayer in the Gold Rush game mode, which was the only game mode that was included at release. Gold Rush is like Rush in Battlefield 4, but instead of defending a MCOM, you defend a box full of gold, which the other team wants to take away from you. And that is done by blowing it up. Later on DICE also added Conquest to Bad Company and these were surprisingly fun to play. In fact these Conquest maps were larger and supported that game mode much better than the Conquest maps we got in Bad Company 2. And I would have loved to show you a Conquest match but the 4 times that I tried I could sadly not find any populated servers. So when you play Bad Company in a multiplayer you will notice a few things. First of all there are 5 classes. The first one is the Assault, which features Assault Rifles that are best for mid-range firefights. You also have an undermounted 40mm grenade launcher, which is a lot of fun to use to remove cover between you and your enemies. And besides that there's a regular hand grenade. You can also unlock the Auto Injector, which you have seen in the single player. You can use it to heal yourself. Then there's the Demolition class. He uses shotguns, which means that this is a class for close range combat. Then you get a faction specific rocket launcher which can also lock on to planted tracer darts. And he got a hand grenade. As unlock you can get anti-tank mines which are best placed in the holes created by the terrain destruction. The Recon is a long range class and features sniper rifles and a faction specific sidearm for close range. He also has a motion sensor which is used to spot and track targets in the area. As unlock you can get the laser designator with which you can paint a vehicle or emplacement. You then call in the laser guided bomb which you need to guide towards the target. Then there's the specialist who uses compact assault rifles with a silencer, so he is best suited for close range to mid range firefights. He also has a tracer gun with which he can plant tracers on vehicles to allow the rocket launch of the demolition class to lock onto and he also has regular hand grenades. As an unlock you can get the C4 remote explosives. And lastly we have to support who uses light machine guns that are best suited for mid-range firefights. He also has a medkit to heal his teammates or to heal himself. He can also use a power drill to fix vehicles or sabotage enemy vehicles. Or use it to kill infantry if he can get close enough. And as an unlock you have the mortar strike designator, which you have seen in the single player. That thing is a lot of fun to use. So I really like that class system in Bad Company and I think that they should have kept it in Bad Company too. Each of these classes has a very clear role, pros and cons. That is in my opinion how it should be done. What you will also notice in the multiplayer is that there is no auto heal and friendly fire is enabled. So you will need to pay a little bit more attention when you are using your gun. Also there is no prone in Bad Company, which many players criticized. I was one of these players to be honest, but after some time you don't really miss it. Sure there are some cases where you would like to go down on the ground behind a rock to take cover, but honestly it does not bother me that much when I'm playing the game. Many achievements in this game are just hilarious, like the one where you have to destroy 1000 trees. And the maps in Bad Company actually have what you can call a forest, not like in Battlefield 3 where you have like 20 trees on the entire map. So Bad Company surprised me in a lot of ways. I did not expect to see DICE to come up with such a great single player and extremely addictive multiplayer. I did not think that I would spend so much time playing a first person shooter with a gamepad in my hand. This game was surely a huge project for DICE and it is not without flaws. You have sound issues, animation issues, there are no subtitles for the single player and the balancing is also not perfect like the attacker's artillery is really annoying at times when you are a defender. But the game has so much to offer that these flaws do not prevent you from enjoying the game. Then in 2010 Bad Company 2 came out and this time also for PC. But the Battlefield community on the PC was not happy with Bad Company as it only had 32 players, no chats, very small maps, no mod tools, no demo recorder, no prone, etc etc etc. Basically Bad Company 2 was a straight console port with the increased player count from 24 to 32. The problem was that at this point Battlefield 2 was already 5 years old and the PC community was starving. They were waiting for the successor of Battlefield 2 and they never played Bad Company 1 as this was a console exclusive game, so they did not know what this franchise was about. 
and coupled with the bad communication from DICE, this led to the PC community having the wrong expectations for what that company would deliver. They expected the success of Battlefield 2, which they were waiting for, which Bad Company could not deliver, and was not meant to deliver. I really enjoyed Bad Company 2, maybe not as much as Bad Company 1, but it is an incredibly good game. The single player brought back the characters we knew from Bad Company 1, but for some reason DICE toned down the comedy aspect in the story. You would still smile here and there, but nothing compared to the first one. There we were. Bad company. We were here in Russian territory to back up a US counterintelligence operation. A simple support mission, they said. Nothing's ever really that simple, though. Is it? I can't believe you're leading us through another minefield, Haggett. You all are some stupid people. Hey, they're forming down there. Marlow. How much time? And off in five. No problem. We're there in three. Also, the single player maps were no longer as open as they were in Bad Company 1. You could still choose your own path most of the time, but you just had much less room now. I did still enjoy the single player in Bad Company 2. I think I played it four to five times, so it's definitely good. But I just like the first one more, because it is not as serious as the second one. So how about the graphics? I only played Bad Company on the PC, so I don't know what it was like on the console. But on the PC the graphics looked phenomenal. Especially the destruction was just insane. You could even bring down entire buildings now. You could basically destroy the entire map if the server was running with enough tickets. And just like in the first Bad Company, I really loved the art style of this game. Especially the design of the soldiers in the multiplayer. DICE gave each one of them a unique and memorable look, which also greatly helped you to visually identify friend and foe. And the micro-destruction on tanks and other vehicles was a very nice touch, that just shows you how much attention to detail was spent on that game. Then there's the sound, which was already extremely good in Bad Company 1, but for Bad Company 2 DICE managed to improve it even more. Just like in the first game, the sound is extremely powerful, which fits very well into the overall tone of the game. And just like in the first Bad Company, we have a voiceover localization option for the multiplayer, which lets you choose if you want to hear the voiceovers of the other team in their native language or in a localized form with an accent. This option is greatly missed in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Now, unlike Bad Company 1, we did get Conquest and Rush maps at launch in Bad Company 2. On the console there was a maximum of 24 players and on the PC DICE increased it to 32. The problem however was that the maps were clearly designed for 24 players, so most of them were just too crowded when you played them with 32 players. Rush worked very good on the maps, but the flip side was that Conquest did not work that well. There were too few flags, no alternative routes, etc. Frequently you would see the other team get pushed back into its base and they had little to no chance to get out of it again. This is still a problem in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. In my opinion, for game modes as different as Rush and Conquest, you must design a map specifically for each of these game modes. You just can't do a one-size-fits-all design, where both are working perfectly. 
What you end up with is a map where one game mode works great and the other one does not work at all, or where both are just mediocre. What both Bad Company games manage to achieve is to have teamwork happen naturally, and this is one of the hardest things to do in a multiplayer game. And just like in Bad Company 1 there is no prone in Bad Company 2. I wouldn't mind if it is there, but to be honest, it doesn't really harm my experience in Bad Company 2. As I've said earlier, there are no chats in Bad Company 2, but since the maps are so small, they don't make much sense there, so we only have helicopters. I never found these to be too much fun to fly, as they are not very agile. Especially the attack helicopter is similar to the one we have in Battlefield 4, which I really hate. The transport helicopter was not bad though. My friends and I had quite some fun with that thing. A great touch was that DICE added end of round cinematics. They just ended each round so nicely. And what I truly love is that the game was loading the next map while you were looking through your achievements in the end of round screen. Sadly this is not the case in any of the Battlefield games that followed Bad Company 2. I don't want to go into all the details of Bad Company 2 as this would just take too long, but I want to say that the multiplayer was and still is a ton of fun. Not everything in it makes sense, like using slugs in a shotgun and snipe someone across the entire map, or the LMG medic, or that the assault could resupply himself with infinite ammo for his noob tube and get turned into a small mobile artillery that way. But these are things that are okay in Bad Company. DICE kept these games relatively simple. There are not a million unlocks, gadgets, attachments and lock-on weapons. Keeping it simple was the best thing DICE could do and I wish they would have done that with Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. So what makes Bad Company so special and memorable is its design, sound, music, the attention to detail and that it didn't take itself too seriously. With Bad Company, DICE has shown us that they are able to do an enjoyable single player, and in my opinion you can see that DICE must have had a lot of fun creating these two games. And every time I play Battlefield 2, Bad Company 1 or Bad Company 2, I just have to wonder what the fuck happened at DICE after Bad Company 2? How could Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 ever happen? Was the development outsourced to China? Or what happened? Today there are still a lot of people who say that Bad Company is not a proper Battlefield game. I say that the Battlefield franchise and the community is so huge that we actually need games that offer us different experiences. I do not want to get the same Battlefield game every two or three years. Seriously, if it's done right I might even enjoy Hardline, because I like different experiences. I only demand that these games are original, special and memorable, and not just reskins of one of the previous games. I don't know if Hardline will be good or not, I will definitely not pre-order it and neither should you, but I am curious to see what it will be like in the end. So I've already said this in my How to Fix Battlefield video. I would like to see Battlefield, Bad Company and Hardline coexist, and each of these series target a different kind of gamer, provide a different kind of experience. It's been a bit over 4 years now that Bad Company 2 has been released and I just can't wait to see Haggard, Sweetwater, Sarge and Marlow again. Bad Company is a series that has a lot to offer and it is a shame to see that IP rotting. So DICE and EA, please give us Bad Company 3. But that said, if Bad Company 3 would turn out to be the same kind of successor to Bad Company 2 as Battlefield 3 was for Battlefield 2, then just don't bother. That would be the worst thing you could do to the Bad Company fans. What we want for Bad Company 3 is that it feels like Bad Company. This means that it must be built with the same design goals and design philosophy as the previous games were. So it is up to us to show DICE and EA that the Battlefield community, that the Battlefield fans are still out here, that there are still customers out here who are waiting for the next installment in the Bad Company series. Like and share this video, post on forums and all the other social platforms out there that you want a new bad company. All that's left for me to say is that I hope that you enjoyed this video and I would like to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.